Welcome to Kiss the Reviews. I'm Armando. That's Corey. And today we are doing 1989's No Holds Barred. You jockass! I'm glad your comebacks are as good as the comebacks in this movie. I learned everything <laughs> about wit and brevity and just <laughs> how to really just lay fire down on people from Mr. Brell. Straight fire. So before we get started, uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, all that happy stuff. But we're just going to get dive right into this one. So that's... Let's, let's do it, brother. Let's... <laughs> <laughs> so no holds barred starring hulk hogan joan severance kurt fuller and tommy tiny lester who i would i would say like his career is the only one that improved from this movie yes because by and large we didn't know he existed then he showed up in this and then he was in friday and then he was a huge star Yes, and I'll be honest, I saw this movie as a youngster, and the only thing I remembered from this movie was that Hulk Hogan was in it, Yes, and that uh, Tiny Lester, or Zeus, was in this. Yes. And I didn't know his name, I just remembered him as Zeus. The only thing I learned from this movie as a youngster, because I was one, was uh, if a wrestler picks you up by your collar, you will, in fact, shit your pants. <laughs> and we will get to that. <laughs> so this movie stars, and again, I got questions right off the right off the rip, if you will. Oh! <laughs> See what I did there? Big pun, boy! <laughs> so Hulk Hogan plays a WWF wrestler. That's a stretch. But... <laughs> But his name is Rip. The, it opens to him wrestling for the WW or defending his WWF title to apparently Jim J. Bullock. Wrong too close for comfort, Jim J. Bullock. Here's a here's a quick spoiler alert for Jim J. Bullock. Circle did not get the square. <laughs> so everybody in this scene, from Jesse the Body Ventura, who's doing the announcing, and uh, Mean Gene. They yes. all have their normal WWF names. Yes. Except for Hulk Hogan, who plays Rip instead of just Hulk Hogan. Okay, cool. Because it's easier for the other actors to say Rip instead of Hulk or Hulk Hogan or Terry or <laughs> any other kind of long name past four words. <laughs> so he defends his title. And did you notice right away in his title defense... The, the master class of acting that Hogan puts on in this movie begins with not only the name change from Hulk Hogan to Rip, but he also takes away his signature move, which was the leg drop. Yes. And now is doing the double axe handle. Let me tell you something. Guy deserved an Academy Award. <laughs> I was going to say, that's a stretch for acting. That was, I mean... I I wish they would have had him on Inside the Actor Studio before James <laughs> Lipton died, because I would love to know how he prepared for that double axe handle. Words, words, words. That's what turns me on. So, basically, he, he, he wrestles for the WWF, but in this movie, it's almost like he wrestles for the, the, the network. Like, yeah. whatever network the WWF is on. During his title defense, Brell, who is Kurt Fuller's character, is watching this and is very upset because he's the president of another network who's last in the ratings, and he... he he cooks up a plan that he needs to have Rip on his network for them to go to number one because that's why the other network is – all right, cool. They Let go... me tell you something. If you're not on board with this plan, <laughs> go take a fucking leak. <laughs> Which he tells the lady the next day in their executive meeting. Ms. Tidings, take a leak. <gasps> He's wanting ideas for them to get to number one, and they're pitching game shows and new sitcoms. And he's like, nope, I got Rip on the mind. So he tells the lady to go take a leak. She's acted like that's the worst thing that's ever been said to oh, her. Oh, this is the waspiest bitch I have ever seen in my life for 1980s corporate America. For her to have made it in that boardroom, being told to piss off in the nicest way possible, which was, Go take a leak, Janice, or whatever her name was. <laughs> and she, 
just aghast that someone would say, bitch, you've heard worse. You Somebody did coke off of your butt At some in order point. for you to get up this far in the food chain. Yeah. No way. Yeah, so he likes throwing things, but he throws like a bitch, Brel does. In oh, this. He, does. He, he throws the remote, and it's like... And then the shot of him, he has this little glass thing in this meeting, and he gets mad because there's no good ideas, and he smashes it. The shot of him throwing it down looks like he was like throwing a Nerf ball, but this thing shatters all over the place. Cool. Not a cut on his hand either. No, no, not this guy's. All. This guy acts like a real jockass. <laughs> you jockass! Here's the other thing that I really hated about this movie. And, and full disclosure, we knew this movie was bad going in. I didn't realize how bad. I did. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad you didn't. Rip, Rip's brother is in this, Randy. Randy is at every one of his matches, ringside, you know, cheering him on. Randy is not only the most annoying character ever written. Hey, what the hell's going on? I don't know. He's also the worst actor, uh, I would say, in, in cinema history. Hey, we are not. Zeus fans. Yeah, it's right. And and here's a quick uh, tip. I won't even call this a PSA because it's not about public safety. Just a tip for you screenwriters out there. Avoid liter or alliteration in your character's name unless they're comic book characters. <laughs> because nobody is naming their kids Rip and Randy. <laughs> it's not a fucking Disney show. It's like Armando and Fanando. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? Don't make fun of my brother, Fanando. <laughs> Brell... <laughs> decides to bring rip into his network offices yes. because he wants to he knows he's under contract with another network and wants to buy him out basically so he can come over there and they could be number one uh rip decides that no because i have principles and pride and things and money doesn't buy happiness it just buys all these cool spandex clothes and do rags this is where brell drops the jockass line. You jockass! Brell gives him the uh, check, blank check, and says, you write down whatever number, and he gets really angry with them. They have this laugh, like, <laughs> hey, look at this blank check. Any number? And it's an uncomfortably long laughing scene. It, it's insanely long. Yes. Because it's just supposed to be like a ha ha ha, fuck you. Yeah. But it goes on and on and on. It's like the exposition in Goldeneye. It doesn't fucking stop. It's it's like the rest of this movie. It just kept going on and on. So Hogan takes the check and shoves it into Brell's mouth and leaves in a huff. Gets into the limo provided by the World Television Network, which is Brell's network. And Hogan gets trapped in said limo i don't know if there's steel trap windows and and sunroof thing or i don't know what they are dude you could just compare this vehicle to like mad max cars <laughs> death race cars fast and the furious like eight cars this is insane yes this vehicle that just has automatic sliding steel this barriers is, everywhere this was more insane than the premise of this movie and the fact that one wrestler will get you to number one in the ratings yeah exactly like this <laughs> the movie started to turn into saw like i thought jigsaw was the goddamn limo driver hello do you want to play a game for years you have been number one in the ratings so he he tries to to break out and he's like kicking the door and he basically tears the inside of the limo apart, which makes the limo driver not maintain control of the vehicle on the road. He's swerving. Or, or his bowels. Okay, yes. He pulls into a warehouse where there's, I mean, I'll use air quotes, but goons are there because they're not very good goons. After kicking and punching everything in the limo, all of a sudden just busts through the sunroof. Well, the I mean, other stuff he couldn't kick out of, he's able to break through with his head. <laughs> so he breaks out of the, the limo, kicks the hell out of all the goons, makes quick work of them, and he literally rips the door off the limo that he couldn't kick the door off of earlier. Grabs the limo driver, jacks him up against the limo, 
delivers the line. Well, first of all, he starts to growl and grunt like a dog. <laughs> then asks the question, What's that smell? And as the, the camera like pans the back of the, the, the limo driver, he has the most liquid shit in his pants that I've ever seen. It was actually really gross. It, it was disgusting. Yeah. And it was so bad. He asks, what's that smell? And the limo driver replies, Dookie! (laughs) There's a million other ways you could have delivered this line outside of Dookie. Yeah. And we're going to go ahead and make this PSA number one for the day. Corey's Life Lessons! Hey, brothers. Uncle Corey here. Quick tip for you if you're out to be an evil henchman and you are put in charge of driving the vehicle that entraps the pro wrestler you have just kidnapped. Eat a lot of fiber, kids. Make sure you have a healthy, regular diet and take a shit before the job. Because aside from having your physical uh, uh, person assaulted, your pride will never recover from shitting your pants. And that's really in all walks of life. Yes. Good, healthy, regular bowels are the key to a healthy life, kids. Absolutely. Absolutely. Plus plus taking your vitamins and saying your prayers. (laughs) (laughs) So after this, uh, Rip, the the next scene is him meeting his account executive. Because Rip has his own personal account executive for some reason. Her name is Samantha Moore. So he has this generic account executive named Samantha (laughs) who... He, he can't keep his eyes off of, can't pay attention in this branding meeting and, and merchandising meeting that they're having. Dare I say, he ripped his pants. And... Yo, you really are big pun boy today. I am big pun You're boy. You're just swinging that pun around. Well, you can't give me a name like Rip and not... That just opens a door and I'm just walking through it. That's so true. they decide, or she decides, that they'll have dinner together. So, because... He can't concentrate in this meeting because of yes. titties and stuff. And takes them to takes them to a, like a French restaurant. But but a douchey, you know, French waiter. Oh, we don't have hamburgers here for you today, Mister American. In the waiter's defense, <laughs> he does kind of have the skin of a hot dog. <laughs> So I would also immediately be like, hey, hot dog, your friend Hamburger is not here. You need to take your ass over to fucking Skyline or some shit. To which at the end of this scene, Hogan speaks a little French. Oui, bien sûr. J'ai faim. So, I don't really think it was French. It was more just like, à la hum, papa, tutu, papu. He just made the shit up. Yeah, he just fucking blah, 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 blah. That was an improv take. And then he went, French! (laughs) So, Brel goes to this bar. He takes his executives to this bar. Very unsanitary bar. Dirty waitresses. There's, again, another unexplainable dentist chair with a tattoo artist. Yeah, dirty doesn't... Like, dirty waitress doesn't explain it. Like, a dirty waitress is like, oh... She did, forgot to put on deodorant is working hard. This bitch had black teeth. And was snotting everywhere. No, 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 honey. You should never look like that in any kind of civilized society. And just in case you didn't catch Hep C from drinking the beer, you're definitely going to get it at the tattoo parlor. In the middle of the bar. Yeah. In this bar, they have like bum fights in the middle or whatever. That wrestling. And his idea is to take these bum fights and turn it into the battle of the tough guys. To- yeah, this is where really, like, Brell, for being like this feisty executive with all these great ideas, like, you're basically starting the UFC. Yes. Which is very different from wrestling. Yes. Why do you need the wrestler to make the UFC shit you have? Big, because well, clearly UFC has become a major fucking thing. Like, Mr. Brell is absolutely onto something. This takes me to my next point, because he announces this Battle of the Tough Guys. You couldn't come up with a better name. He ta- he announces this on TV and says, you know, it's basically a wrestling tournament, no holds barred. 
Or he said the name of the movie. He, he said it, and then they did it. So <laughs> he, he announces this tournament, and the winner gets $100,000 tax-free. A, I don't think he can do that, but cool, tax-free. And Maybe they're in New Hampshire or Florida. They, <laughs> I said no state taxes. That's so right. He announces this. It it happens, but they film it in this like dirty ass bar for whatever reason. Because at the end of the movie, they have like the whole studio with the the ring and everything, and like that's that's how a network would film that. But he does it in this dirty bar. The ratings are through the roof. He is so happy that they were number one. My question is, because this is where they enter Zeus, right? Mm -hmm. And this is the reason why they're number one, is because Zeus comes in, kicks down the steel door, it's backlit. I will say this, very well shot, this this part. He fucks everybody up, wins this whole you know battle royale thing, and they're number one in the ratings. Movie's over. In my opinion, why do yeah. you, why do you need Rip? You have your Rip in Zeus, and this this battle of the tough guys thing is now like they go to the next episode, and it's basically Zeus fighting other contenders, yes, w- with weapons and everything else, and he's just kicking the shit out of everybody, and he's number one in the ratings. You don't need Rip, but he still has this thing like I need Rip for whatever reason. Oh. It- the the amount of felonies that he commits just to get <laughs> after winning everything he wanted just to get the guy he doesn't need anymore yeah. it's phenomenal like dude save yourselves the headache <laughs> you don't you've won bro and you did it without the guy yeah what well, are you pissed about because he stuffed a blank check down your throat apparently rip and his account executive sam have to go on this overnight stay somewhere there's only one hotel room that the company booked for some strange reason and then you know we're to believe that hulk hogan doesn't sexually assault an attractive lady i find that very hard to believe at least harass (laughs) i won't put i won't put an assault on homeboy but i'm gonna uh yeah somebody's getting and by the way him vigorously put doing push-ups, that was harassment. First off, <laughs> dude, take off your goddamn bikini underwear. You're a grown-ass man. What the shit are you doing in those? Other than show proving to everyone that you do, in fact, use steroids. Because the proof is right there in the pudding. <laughs> so... Jesus. Yeah, that, that whole scene is just, we're, we're to believe that he's masturbating and he's just doing push-ups and yes. cool. By the way, who the fuck masturbates like that? Because she's like, oh, my God, like, oh, what's he doing? The fucking bed. <laughs> <laughs> who masturbates that way? Dude, he's punching the clown. He's he's putting in work. <laughs> take take it easy on yourself. <laughs> he's got my fucking... Lanta. Yeah, he's got uh, he's got rug burns on his dick. Look, so, I, I get not everybody's gonna light candles and put the thong song on, yeah. but you don't have to hammer it home that quite that hard. No, no. We find out that Sam actually works for Brell. Bum bum bum. Yeah, the, there's your there's your big plot twist. And she was supposed to seduce Rip, but Rip is such a nice guy and pride and things. Um, he he didn't take the bait. And how, about, how about this, Joan Severance? I didn't seduce him because I'm not a fucking whore. <laughs> Listen, she tried with her very unflattering Victoria's Secret bedtime wear. Right? <laughs> the the bra was fine. The belly button or higher uh, panties, not, not, not so great. Not so flattering. Should have gone. There's another choice should have been made. But she starts telling Brell that she couldn't do it because he's just a really nice guy. And Brell smacks the shit out of her like she was a fucking man. (laughs) Felony number one after you've already won the whole point of your movie. So she goes to his house after he hits her and they start to fool around on the couch. Who did this to you? It's not important. 
cool, let's fuck. <laughs> Dude. So the next scene is like Rip is at some sort of fair or something with kids and he's teaching kids wrestling and I don't know, there's like pony rides in the back. I don't know what he's teaching them <laughs> other than how to look like you are scared shitless. <laughs> And he's holding, he's holding all these kids back, like, stay back, kids, stay back. First off, them, those kids aren't running towards Zeus. That's the most <laughs> terrifying human being on the planet. Yes. Okay? Second, Zeus ain't here for no kid. Yeah. He's there for you. Quit trying to hold them back, puss boy. And Brel gets in the middle of them, and he's just like, will you accept the challenge? He didn't accept the challenge. Zeus is the champion. That's not how that works. This scene makes me remind. Or this scene will remind everyone how good actually Rocky Five is, <laughs> because it's the exact same scene at the end. Sam then gets attacked by one of Brell's goons after this, and the goon, when he attacks her in like the little parking garage, literally says, "Mr. Brell, oh! it's a party time." It cuts to him on the floor with her. Looks like he's about to rape her, but then. Hulk comes in with his motorcycle, chases the guy, he's on the motorcycle, flings him into a tree. It like goes from like this very serious thing, like attempted rape, to a like a Laurel and Hardy bit. Yes. You know, the slapsticky, like it should have like when he hit the tree, it should have been like <laughs> And then he goes on the ground and, and Rip drives away. Oh, it's so bad. And again, like you said, the rape. Out of nowhere. Yeah. yeah. Her, her, she, she doesn't have a character. Okay. Like we're no. account executive. Yeah. That's not even, her role is damsel in distress. Yes. That's the only point of her character. Yep. Matter of fact, that's the only point of all women in this movie. Um, that's the point of every character besides if, Zeus and Hulk. Yeah. <laughs> if, if, if Hulk Hogan is not there to save you, you're shit out of luck. Yeah. Across the board. Whether yeah. you own a restaurant, whether you're Joan Severance, <clears throat> it's phenomenal. Yeah. The the next scene is Randy, Rip's brother, going to, you know, the bum fights and that are number one, because he wants to see what Zeus is all about. You've already but seen him on TV. Like, you know what Zeus yeah. is about. Hulk's trainer in in his exposition explains that like he used to be Zeus's trainer, but him crazy he killed a guy in the ring why does it always got to be i killed a, this guy killed a guy in the ring and he went to jail and whatever what, but, why do they have to perpetuate the stereotype that all black people know each other <laughs> those two they're the only two black characters that actually have speaking lines in this movie yes. other than the diner owner yeah and they miraculously know each other we can't get exposition another way exactly even though randy gets kidnapped Basically, the security guards take him 10 feet over here to see Zeus, if you want to call that kidnapped. But Randy puts hands on Zeus first. Like, he started this goddamn fight. And Zeus puts him in the hospital. He oh, basically he's, paralyzes he's paralyzed from the neck down. <laughs> now, this is what's funny. This movie's horrible. But the plot lines that were taken from this movie and put into other movies later, because that's the plot line of Kickboxer. Yes. His brother gets attacked by a menace and is paralyzed. Yep. A couple other points on that scene. One, is Randy's friend Joel McHale? Because that dude I don't know. looks and sounds I don't know. so much like Joel <laughs> McHale, dude. It's like, yo, J young Joel McHale with a mullet had a very early speaking role in a movie. Good for you. Uh, but two... It just to, just to point out uh, or lend credence to your point that Randy is the problem in this scene, they're running terrified because Zeus is losing control, right? Yeah. He's on his dash, he's losing control. they are got to run away from everybody. Yeah. Crashes into Brell. Brell, for the one point in this entire movie, which totally goes against his character, gets trampled by Randy unknowingly and Joel McHale. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, hey, hey, it's okay. It's okay. Everybody's excited. We get it. Okay, way to go. That's yeah. pretty cool. Then I see your, uh, we converted a couple of Rip fans. That's what I like to see. You're off the hook. Yes. You, you are not asked to go any further, yep. but your big fucking mouth because your brother is a tough guy. 
you ain't shit. Yeah. Your brother's a tough guy. You open your fucking trap. Hey, we are not Zeus fans. Then Joel McHale has to chime in and help things. Yeah, that's right. Rips his brother. Way to completely rat fuck your friends. <laughs> because it's not like Brell is a secret. Yeah. Randy's in the loop the whole time well, on what's going on. And then after that, after he finds out and he's like, oh, take them and come with me. It's not like Brell's keeping them there. Right. They're just, you know, they're having this this back and forth with Zeus and Randy and Joel McHale. Um, we'll call him like discount, the cheap Joel McHale. He he gets in front of Randy like, don't do anything crazy. Let's go. Randy. Yeah, that's not that's not going to end well for you. And it doesn't. He's in a wheelchair now. Where did the courage come between shitting your pants and running away from him? When he was just want to fight. And yeah. he's like, oh, I'm Zeus. And you're like, oh, shit, book it. To now, you're like, I got you. <laughs> where where did that courage get built up? I don't, I dude, I have no idea. But. Randy's a problem. You we, need to check yourself, Randy. Because you're writing checks that your ass can't cash. And your brother can basically cash. Uh, uh, barely cash. Yeah. Fucking asshole. So we we get to the oh. is it the the Rocky two scene where his brother's in the hospital bed and he's out but he wakes up. You can win. Go get him. Yep. And he's like, oh, brother. Oh, <laughs> yes. So he decides that he's gonna fight Zeus. They set up this whole thing in an actual like studio with an audience and a nice ring and professional equipment. And the, he, Randy goes with his buddy, Sam, also shows up. They're taking Rip or uh, Randy to the, the ring. She gets kidnapped and taken to where the, exe- the other executives are and just sat on the couch. Like, not, yeah. not tied up. Not, not just, here, sit down. Would you like an avion? And Brell tells Rip, like, you got 10 minutes. Make it look good, but you're going to throw this match And we got your girlfriend. Of course, he says, yes, I'll throw the match. And he keeps looking at the clock because there's a giant clock like right above the. uh, Just in case you forgot what time was. Sam, during the fight, easily sneaks out and escapes uh, because nobody's paying attention to her. They're watching the fight uh, like it's, you know, real. And she makes it down to the ring. Rip sees that that she's there. And he turns the tables. Just before he's about to lose consciousness. During this whole thing where, you know, he sees that Sam's out, uh, Rip's turning the tides, and he's beating the shit out of Zeus. Brell starts to rip out his own electronics in his studio. He's literally ripping wires out of, like, all the connectors in his studio. He's going on, like, an old, like wwe like undertaker or kane yes. like i'm losing my mind and i'm beating up the lockers and- yeah and because you know anger so rip kills zeus throws him down into the ring this wasn't a very well constructed ring because when he hits the mat oh. there's just a giant circle that he just drops into like Dude. Oh, i'm glad you didn't get body slammed in that the middle of that ring earlier and then he admires his handiwork he like looks over and's like uh Cool. Blood coming out of the corner of his mouth. Well then, well, then he goes for Brell in the booth and gets called a jockass for the second time in this movie. Jockass! He runs into his own, you know, electrical handiwork that he was doing earlier and he gets electrocuted and dies. <laughs> this movie, I again, this is a movie that you and I both saw when we were kids. I was into wrestling. You were into wrestling. This was a thing, and and maybe for the entertainment value, I don't know. Maybe because it was so over the everything was so over the top, I liked it. Yeah, it was uh, a wrestling movie. Yeah, and but yeah, I knew going in this would not stand the test of time. I did not realize how much it would not stand the test of time. Like, yeah. I thought this was going to be a bad, and I think you you told me this uh, before. But I thought it was going to be, like, funny bad. Exactly, yeah. This was unwatchable bad. Oh, yeah, this is just... This movie... Start to finish, there's... 
the edits, the directing, the, the acting, the script, literally, the fucking lighting. Everything about this movie was bad. The voiceover work, like the voiceover oh. dubs. <laughs> Come on, Randy. Let's go, Charlie. We're going to rip Jake Bullet, man. We're going to rip him up, man. Keep it up. Come on. Way to go, guys. I'll be honest. The most annoying thing about this, and I, and I mentioned it before, was, was Rip's brother. And not only up until the, the, the last fight, but during, if you didn't like him or you didn't like his acting before that, it, it was solidified with the, with the end of this movie and the last match because, you know, he's stuck to his chair. And so he, the only acting he can do with is with his face. And God and he damn it. His finger. <laughs> well, which, by the way, another scene taken and put into Digstown at the end of that movie. <laughs> but th- th- his face, and he's like, come on, who says this? Come on, big brother. Come on, big brother! Okay, I have an older brother. Never once have I been like, come on, big brother, or let's go, big brother. Hey, no. brother. <laughs> I call him by his name. But it's a lot of like, uh, uh, uh. you're not wrestling. I don't understand what your face is for, but like... Does it hurt to talk? Like, <laughs> was your voice box paralyzed as well? It's so bad. It's so stupid. It's so bad. Um, but yeah, for uh, a Vince McMahon <laughs> joint, this uh, this was terrible. Well, I'm glad he kept trying because it did get better. Did it? It did because we got The Rock and John Cena later. Okay, I'll, I'll give you that. So, but, but I give that I give more credit to them than to him. <laughs> oh well, yeah. I'm just saying, like if if Vince started this and was like. Whoa, boys, we fucked that one up and just stopped. Yeah. Maybe it wouldn't have been as uh, successful later on down the line. So I'll, I'll give that let to that, you. Let that be a lesson to you, kids. Keep on trying. Keep, keep it on might trucking. Be better. Keep on trucking, brother. <laughs> <laughs> With that said, for Corey, I'm Armando. This is Kiss the Reviews, and this was 1989's No Holds Bod. Yeah. Ha, ha, ha.